Good to see you, everybody. Welcome to Clevedon Baptist Church. And we come and we bring our worship, we bring our praise this day. And we come to celebrate communion together. Come now to this Lord's Supper, for Christ is here. Come with your sorrow and find joy, with your faults and find forgiveness with your regrets and find hope come with your fears and find strength come if life is dark and find light if your heart is troubled and find peace if your spirit is hungry and find nourishment come just as you are and meet with the one who welcomes you who waits to set you free and to bring you fullness of life. You are here. He is here. Offer your worship and receive all he longs to give you. So shall we stand and bring our praise, our words of worship to the one who comes to be our saviour. 
the one who comes to set us free. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. The hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. And nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the most of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again, and you have no Jesus Christ, what a powerful name it is, no nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. No rival, you have no equal now and forever. God, you reign, and yours is a kingdom, yours is a
So, Lord, in the name, in the powerful name of Jesus, as we've gathered in this space here, as we gather uh, online, as we join together in the name of Jesus, we, Lord, we, we bring our hunger and our need for help and strength, for love and acceptance, for wholeness and healing and we come into your presence, King Jesus. And Lord, as we, your people, gather, Lord, we, we do so uh, coming yet again, praying for the brokenness, the sickness, our, our nation that's perishing in these days. And so, Lord, into the misery of death and killing and murder and terrorism and knife crime and hatred, 
Lord, we pray for the, the gospel kingdom of God breakthrough of the, the justice and peace and hope of Jesus into this land, into our nation. Lord, enable your church. And Lord, we pray for the church that's so in the news at the moment down in South End, but across this whole nation, in villages and towns and in cities, we pray, Lord, for your church, including in this town, for there to be a renewed boldness and courage to speak out and to act in the powerful name of Jesus in these days. And Lord, up and down this country, not just those families in the news, but Lord, there's much grief, much mourning, much misery. And so Lord, as we come into your presence with our words of praise, Lord, we know that soon we will be sent out to do kingdom stuff in this nation. Lord, use us, equip us, anoint us to serve your purposes in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. It's great to see you. Please find a seat if you're um, here in the auditorium standing up. If you're at home, you can find a seat if you've stood up. Um, not that you need me to tell you that, but uh, it's great that you're here joining us either in the building uh, or uh, online with us, or maybe uh, you're, you're kind of catching up with us, uh, but you're welcome. We're, we're glad that you've, you've done that. Um, John, do you want to put some of that? That's great. Thank you. Those pictures up there. Uh, this is just to remind us that... Uh, we have different congregations in our church, and this weekend it's kind of full-on congregations. So, so Mosaic met yesterday. Mosaic met with families yesterday. Yep, and so uh, Sunday morning's pill happens. We're, we're looking to see a, a, a new congregation established over in, in Pill, and uh, uh, Neil looks after that uh, uh, congregation at the moment, and they're uh, with uh, a group of others trying to form a team and, and really seek God's will for Pill. By the way, Neil and Dorothy, um, I think Neil's at Pill, but if Dorothy's watching, this is winging its way round to you soon because uh, we're celebrating uh, uh, their golden uh, wedding anniversary. You know now there's a bit of a thing started. I know who started it, <laughs> but uh, you get a balloon, it's your golden wedding anniversary, so that's going around. So congratulations to Neil and Dorothy uh, for their, their, their golden wedding anniversary. And then uh, this afternoon we've got Poets Muse meeting, uh, Poets Muse uh, retirement home there, and that's meeting, and Muddy, muddy Church. Muddy Church at the farm this afternoon. We're and on we're, the farm, it's going to be muddy. We're going to be bottle feeding calves. Are we? And, well, um, there you go. Learning about cows and praise, learning, praising God on a farm this afternoon. We're praising God on a farm amongst the mud and the smells of the farm. That's, that's going to be <laughs> fantastic fun. Now we're going to have a great... Great time there. So that, that's just to remind you, please be praying uh, this afternoon for, for Poets Muse and for, for Muddy Church. Uh, we're going to do some praying this week. So tomorrow we've got an opportunity to do pastoral praying. Um, join us on Zoom from 7 o'clock for pastoral prayers for yourself, for others, for the nation. Just come along. Um, you've got the Zoom link in the email or um, ask me and I'll give it to you again. And that's a really op real opportunity to come for prayer for healing, but for any yeah. other issue that's on your mind. So the idea of that is, yeah, it's personal prayer, but also you can come bringing prayer requests for others. And if you wanted somebody to pray with you, we can do that because we can move into little groups. But equally, you can just share it into the main group there and we can pray. So that's tomorrow, pastoral Tuesday prayer Tuesday is prayer ministry. focus, half past seven. It's here, but we're also going to be live streaming it. So if you can't make it here, watch online at half past so, yeah. seven and yeah. there'll be worship and prayer yeah. and points to pray for that. 7.30 on That's Tuesday. That's great. So if you're away, business stuff, you can perhaps uh, link in with us that way or if you can't get into the building. But uh, we do want some people in the building with us. Uh, and that would be really good as well. <laughs> if so, you're going to be at home. So, uh, well, well I, I plan to be in the building. So there you go. It's prayer focus on Tuesday, 7.30. And then we're, we're going to do some 24-7 praying, aren't we? 
Thursday the 21st from 12 o'clock noon through to the following 12 o'clock noon, we're asking people to join 24-7 prayer and to pray, to have a, take an hour. You can do it on your own from home. You, we're not coming to the building at all. No. You do it at home, on Zoom, in prayer triplets, with your family, and choose an hour um, to do, sign up for it. Um, it'd just be great. Uh, if you've never done it before, it's not just for the really spiritual people to pray. Just, just learn how to pray. Take the opportunity. It'd be great to have people who haven't taken an hour slot before. Yeah. Um, and I should be around afterwards with my charts, timetable to fill in things. We want that flow of prayer. And, and you know, we see what's going on in our, our own nation, let alone across the nation of the world, how we need to be praying. And we... we we, we need to be praying in the spirit. And there's a, a sheet that you would have been given. Uh, it's been sent out. Yeah. It's got some uh, themes about what we're praying. Do you know what it looks like that? You won't be able to read it. But <laughs> today it's Muddy Church and Seniors. And it goes into to, uh, our hybrid uh, church online. And then Families, Mosaic, uh, Albania. Yeah, it just takes you away. for other things. But that just meant on those days. Gives you something to start with. In a united way. We're yes. all sort of praying for those things as well. So let's, let's be doing that. And uh, pray in the spirit. So Lord... Help us this week to do kingdom business in prayer. So come Holy Spirit, because we want to be those that pray in the Spirit, pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the powerful name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to align our words and our prayers with your will. And we want to pray for your kingdom to be at work, for your kingdom to come. And so, Lord, be at work through the prayers of your people as we blend our prayers with the prayers of, uh, of your people up and down this land and then across the world. Lord, we just thank you for this um, fantastic dynamic of, of prayer, of praying, of seeing you do great and marvellous things. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're sharing in communion this morning. We invite all who know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour to share in this meal with us. Let's remind ourselves of uh, Paul's words as he introduces, as he reminds us, as he explains the Lord's Supper. For the tradition which I handed on to you came to me from the Lord himself, that on the night of his arrest, the Lord Jesus took bread and after giving thanks to God, broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in memory of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And as we share in this uh, fellowship meal together, we're going to do uh, two, two things, uh, as well as share bread and wine. We're going to welcome some new members uh, into the life of the church here. So we're going to do that now. So that's you. You know who you are. Come and stand up here. That would be great so we can see you. And then we're, we're sharing bread and wine and we will proclaim, remember Christ's uh, death on the cross for us. That's great. Come up here. If you're new members, people, that's brilliant. Thank you. John's coming off from the back of media. He's going to run back in a minute to carry on with that. So um, come and join us up here. And then we're, we're, we're sharing communion together and remember and proclaim Christ's death. And then we're going to commission and pray for new leaders in the life of the church. So this is a, a good occasion. Great to see you up here. And um, we have... Um, uh, a couple of people who are joining us online as well this morning, but uh, we've got Logan over there. Give us a wave, Logan, and Katie, and uh, John, John, who's married to Wendy. They, 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 they do like each other. It just so happens it's ended up like that. Uh, uh, Robin and Jenny, they do like each other because they're married as well. And we've got Jen, and we've got Tracy uh, as well. It's fantastic to see uh, God bringing new people among us, and so I want to give you the opportunity to uh, declare your faith and to make promises as we welcome you into uh, the life of the church here. And so I'm going to ask you the question I'm going to ask you 
all together, otherwise we'll have to go down the road. We're going to do it all together. Uh, do you declare your faith in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, having found new life in him? And do you believe God has called you to serve Christ as part of this local Baptist church? And do you commit yourselves to love and serve the Lord within this church community and in the world and being filled with the Holy Spirit to fulfil your ministry in the body of Christ? And so we welcome you. It's great to have you on board with us as we do kingdom stuff together in these days. So let's pray. And Lord, thank you for these wonderful people and their fantastic story of you breaking into their lives and transforming them and turning their lives around and giving them new life. And Lord, we thank you that in this moment, in this season that you've called them to be part of, of the church here and the ministry and mission and the, the life of the church gathered and sent. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. And so we pray for them. We pray, come Holy Spirit, and fill them and empower them to live the Jesus life. And Lord, we know they're going to be a blessing to us. Lord, we need to be a blessing to them. And together we need to be a blessing to the world around us. And so Lord, we thank you for the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's welcome them. Give them a round of applause. And so we come to share in communion. Jesus said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. And we drink wine and we remember that Christ's blood was shed for you, for me, for us. And so we come with gratitude and thanksgiving and you'll find your communion bread and wine by your seat. And uh, we're going to see this video with words and pictures to help us as we share in this Lord's Supper together. Let's eat and drink with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you, Lord.
at your feet. I will fall at your feet, and I will worship you. And we thank you, crucified, risen Saviour, for all that you have accomplished and won for us. We remember, we proclaim your saving death Until you come again, Lord Jesus. Amen. And in our family meal occasion, we're going to um, pray for new leaders. We've appointed a whole load of new leaders. Some of them are continuing, but they're kind of reappointed and therefore it's an important uh, moment. So again, you, you know who you are, church leaders, ministry team leaders. Come and join me up here. That's great, thank you. Brilliant. We'll fill this platform up. And, and so we have church leaders and ministry team leaders, uh, church leaders that ha- uh, who act as overseers, and then ministry team leaders picking up uh, um, uh, specific areas of of ministry and mission among us, so uh, just so uh, you know who's who, we've got Martin, give a wave Martin so we know who you are, uh, Helen who's here, uh, these are church leaders, Ruth in the middle there and John who's been on keyboard who's moved across here, Pete that's at the back there and Karen is great there, we uh, have Heather Hale who is children's and youth who is operating the camera at this moment, so either you have no camera uh, or, and you can, well you wouldn't be able to see her anyway then, so anyway, uh, she could turn the camera right round on her but that would, well anyway, we're not going to do that, well we might do that, um, so that's Heather at the back there, we're going to pray for her, um, Julie is from Mosaic Church, uh, uh, Mary and Albert uh, there who pick up the family's work, we have Kristen online, who's picking up our, uh, our social action, MTL, and Pat here, who picks up welcome. And at this moment, uh, we're also uh, thanking God, well, where's Keith? Come and join me up here, Keith. Keith Pym, who's been one of our, our, our church leaders here, and Matt Sharp as well. Uh, and uh, Matt served as a church leader, but he's serving this morning upstairs in the, the youth work, uh, which is great. So um, we um, want to thank you, Keith. Come up here, you're going to pray in a minute, but I'm going to give you that as a little thank you from us here as well. But it's great that you've served with us. So, um, my friends, do you believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord? And do you believe that God has called you through this church to serve as church leaders and ministry team leaders? And do you promise in dependence upon his grace to exercise this ministry faithfully? Wait there a second. It's not that exciting. I didn't know how I was going to get through the crowd of leaders to find the microphone. Let's pray for this. Shall we stand together? Maybe you want to reach out your hands. And uh, would you pray? As you sort of step away from this role, would you pray for uh, our brothers and sisters here in their um, uh, roles? What do I want to make sure we're alive? Let's do that. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your gracious love for us. We thank you that you have called us to be a body of your people. And we pray, Lord, for 
these folk who have been willing to be obedient to your call. Lord, we pray that you will give them humility, you will give them servant hearts, that you would equip them for the tasks which lie ahead. We thank you that when you call us into your service and into your ministry, you also equip us. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring a spirit of boldness and of courage to these, your servants. Yes, Lord. That they might recognize your voice and be obedient in following you. So we just thank you for the privilege of Christian ministry and service. And we pray, Lord, a huge blessing upon these folk now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Just time we're going to be singing a song. It's your very word presence living in me. This is my Please sit down. And perhaps, John, you could put my pictures back up in a moment. Thank you. Well, apparently we've become a nation of, of whingers that we like to moan and complain and whinge and become miserable about all kinds of things. And uh, you, you know by now that I, I collect the, these, these lists, and I've got 50 things. 
uh, and you're going to be relieved to know I'm not going to give you all the 50 of, of, of things. Some of them are, are not that important, but we whinge about them, we moan about them, they, they cause us to become miserable. Um, and let me give you a flavour, uh, and uh, uh, spending more time loading and unloading the dishwasher than you would have done washing up. Or, or chipped nail varnish, which is a real problem, and uh, uh, spotting someone wearing the same outfit as you, just have a look around, and, oh. and uh, when that happens, um, um, over or under brewed tea, apparently makes us whinge and moan and complain and become miserable people. When the remote control batteries run out, and then in number 10 on this list, a, a, a disappointing air freshener. I, I, I've... <laughs> I, I've never been disappointed about an air freshener before, but now I'm going to go and do some more study on such things. But some people get very upset. Uh, stepping on something wet when you're wearing socks, that is a bit of a pain. Uh, uh, and uh, we, we know that. Two Weetabix not fitting into a round bowl, <laughs> resulting in one becoming soggy while the other remains dry. And so on. Well... Silly things, but maybe we have become a nation of moaners. Well, in 1 Thessalonians 5, there's another list that, that the Apostle Paul brings, and it's a list of things for new and for existing church leaders. And uh, it's a list for existing and new and new reappointed ministry team leaders and it's a list for new church members and ongoing pressing on CBC church members and uh, in the list are some ways to actually counteract our, our whinging and, and moaning because Paul says this always 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 be joyful never stop praying don't do that, Just stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So here's a question for us. Uh, and it's an important question for us. How are we doing in terms of cultivating a life of rejoicing and praying and giving thanks. I, I reckon it's worth you thinking about that this week at some point. Maybe having a conversation with somebody else in your prayer trip, in your home group, or, uh, and so on. Then Paul says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. May he read, do not extinguish the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. Never damp the fire of the Spirit. There's another question for us. Do we welcome the fire of the Spirit? And then he uh, says this, do not scoff at prophecies. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. It's a great list. You could work your way through and pray about and think about. And uh, th there's a, another question for us. How do we treat prophecy? I ask that question because in the Old Testament, in the, Old Testament, in the book of Wisdom, Proverbs 29, we're told that where there is no prophetic Vision, the people cast off restraint. Where there is no vision, the people perish. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. And we're going to unpack this idea of prophetic vision. Individuals need it. That, that God impressing upon us, uh, God nudging us, God showing us, God 
pointing the way to us. God speaking to us. God speaking into our now situation, into our now circumstances. We need that. Uh, Ministry team leaders need that. Church leaders need that. Members of this church need that. Individuals need that. Churches need it because where there is no vision, the people perish. Nations need it. A nation without God's guidance is a nation without order. You notice that? Where there's no vision, the people, the nations perish. Happy are those, says the wisdom teacher, who keep God's law. So here's my hunch that uh, there is a, uh, it's increased uh, over this whole COVID thing that's been happening, still happening around us. There is this present day over-reliance now on data. We want data, we want investigations, we want inquiries, we want projections forward, we want modelling, we have assumptions, we have statistics, we have scientific analysis, we have the think tanks working. Hey, we've got a roadmap, we've got another roadmap. Hey, what about this roadmap? We have manifestos, manifestos that are set up like this, but okay, we're changing them en route because uh, who cares anyway? We have guidance and special guidance, and speculations. And then into the mix comes our our own experiences, our own wishes, our, our own preferences, rather than looking for prophetic vision and revelation. We must not get trapped into all that other stuff and avoid the prayer, the seeking, of God's prophetic vision and revelation. See, see, we need to remember, but where there is no vision, the people perish and we will end up lost and unsure and confused. We need prophetic clarity and vision for the days ahead. We're desperate for something divine that cuts through. Therefore, do not treat prophecies with contempt. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. For where there is no prophecy, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint and run wild and perish. And what's true of the nations around us can be true of the church that we are part of. This dimension of prophetic vision is about the now word of God, prophetic vision and revelation that is aligned and tested with the scriptures, God's written word, and Jesus, the son, God's living word. There's no substitute for us living under the rule and reign of of Jesus, the eternal and true word of God. See, see Jesus is not just a prophet who comes bringing the word of God. He comes from eternity into history as the eternal word of God. You were the word. We sung it at the beginning. And there's no substitute for us hearing and knowing and living according to our Heavenly Father's voice found in the timeless pages of the written, inspired Word of God. As well as us tuning in to that heart-to-heart whisper of the now prophetic word, revelation, vision of God for this particular time, for this season, for this situation, for this place, for this people, for this moment, for where there is no vision, the people perish. And it will involve us being committed and convinced that God speaks. It will uh, need us to take the Bible, including the prophetic scriptures, much more seriously than we probably do. It will require us to be grateful for the the 
functional Ephesians 4 ministries that Christ gives to equip his people, which builds up the church, which includes the ministry of the prophet. Well, there's Kevin doing his stuff on Grand Designs this week. I love that programme. Uh, and, uh, and this is the house that was built. I was reading this week, someone said it looked like Asda's, but I think it's a little bit harsh myself. But uh, uh, another Grand Design. Uh, and Grand Design is a programme that tells the story of nothing to building a Grand Design building. Uh, and when it talks about the ministry of the prophet, of prophecy that builds up, it, it's language borrowed from the building site of, of a house build, the process of a house build project in action. But it's not just some kind of grand design, it's, it's God's grand, 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 grand design. And, and, and that involves, it needs the prophetic. It will need us to desire the spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit, which includes prophecy, that strengthens it, that encourages, that comforts the church. And it will mean that we have the courage to test everything and then act so. It will be about us being a people of prophetic vision and revelation. Why because where there is no vision, the people perish. Where people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. And it will be the church now living within the prophetic destiny of Pentecost. In those days, in these days, for Joel's prophetic words are being fulfilled in these days. I will pour out my spirit, says the, says the Lord, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. Well, we can apply this into our whole life discipleship and spirituality. In, in at least these three ways, and let me uh, take you through them. Uh, firstly, uh, in terms of motivational direction, which for many of us is a, perhaps the most common use of this idea of vision. This sees prophetic vision as something uh, to do with the direction we're heading in, the destination, where we are going. And then it becomes something to do with strategy and goals and working out priorities. Uh, we uh, use the language of vision building, vision casting and so on. Into that, and uh, into the mix of ideas and thoughts and, and so on, needs to come this, this prophetic cutting edge. See, it's more than just us coming up with something. So it becomes something about calling and gifting and opportunity and anointing and availability and direction and, and a particular emphasis in this season, in, in, in our lives personally or corporately, uh, in our teams, uh, in our congregations, in our church. And so here at, at CBC we have Vision 2025, uh, and, and we're presently working, these new leaders have been thrown straight into this process now. We're presently working at 2022 vision building and planning. In the light of that, the overall vision we, we sense God has given us here, we're, we're working out what that means for the, for the coming year. Why? Because where there's no vision, the people perish. So vision with this emphasis on on. Direction and, and destination. So, you know, if you look in the Bible, uh, there's Noah. Uh, uh, he has direction, he builds a boat. Nehemiah, he builds a wall. Uh, Paul, he's become a witness to all the people of what he's seen and heard. And so, Acts 13, he's commissioned, set aside Saul, Barnabas for a particular task. Jesus sets his face to Jerusalem and the cross, it says in, in Luke 9.51. It's about direction, journey, uh, 
destination and this type of motival, motivational, directional, prophetic vision means that we can say yes to the right things and no to many other things. Maybe good things, but not the right things for us at this time. And then secondly, there's what we could call spiritual God awareness vision. This is to do with visions of God. As heaven is open, we get a vision of who God is. This type of vision is much needed in today's church. And so, for example, we have Ezekiel on his birthday. What a birthday gift he got. I've got a lovely birthday gift. It's on my, my wrist. I'm really pleased with it. Um, that's my birthday gift. But on his birthday gift, he didn't get a watch. He got visions of God. You can read about it, Ezekiel chapter 1, as the heavens are opened and there's majesty and there's mystery and there's the, the, the movement of God. God is on the move and there's a throne and there's wheels and there's a rainbow and there's living creatures and, and he saw visions of God. Or we can go into the New Testament, there's Stephen, Acts 7, full of the Holy Spirit, about to lose his life. He'd lived a good life. He was a good man. But his life was to be taken from him. Such as our fallen world. It's what happened on Friday. It's what happened in Acts 7. And as he's taking his last breath, as stones are impacting his body, he looks and he sees, and heaven is opened, and he sees the glory of God, and he sees the Son of Man standing. I love that. that. That Stephen lived and died in such a way it got Jesus on his feet. And so we start singing, stand up, stand up for Stephen. And he stands to welcome Stephen home into the eternal kingdom. And he stands up because Jesus is on the move. And he's going to step back into history and step back into the nations. And his kingdom will come in all its fullness. Through our engagement with Scripture and by the Holy Spirit, we are let into these visions of God. So the New Testament disciple John, he sees, he hears, he shares prophetic vision. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ who God gave him to show his servants the events that must take place soon. Words of prophecy to the church. Look, look, look. He comes with the clouds of heaven. Which is the third kind of dimension of prophetic revelation. This third aspect as it, it points us to what is to come or maybe we should say who is to come. This is not it. It's not over yet. There's more. We desperately, desperately, desperately need to futurize our whole life discipleship. How are we going to do that? Through embracing prophetic scripture again. For where there's no vision, the people perish. Hey, there's great concern about Christmas 2021. We're going to have enough turkey and presents and the whole transportation system. We've got the, 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 the newspapers. Rush to save Xmas. Don't panic buy everybody. So we'll go out and sort of, uh, not panic, I'm not panic buy. Just that I've got my Christmas pudding and my <laughs> turkey and crackers and everything. I've sorted. Um, but this kind of panic. How, how are we going to do Christmas this year? Hey, we don't need to worry about getting ready for Christmas this year. What we need to be worried about, what we need to be getting ready for, is not celebrating his first coming, but getting ready for his second coming. And it's lost amongst the very people who should have their sights on what is to come, or rather who is to come again. 
And our world is ignorant of this. Worryingly so is the church. What about this? For some prophetic picture for you. As James says, be patient, stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters. Far too much grumbling goes on amongst the people of God. And yes, in this church, grumbling against one another. Don't grumble against one another, says James, or you will be judged. Then he says this, the judge, that's King Jesus, is standing at the door. But when someone's standing at the door, that means they're ready to come in. And he's ready. And he's coming. And he's about to step over into the threshold of history again. Could you get hold of this prophetic picture James brings to us and live this week in the reality of what will be, who will be. Let me try and capture what this is all about for us with with these words. God. God, I look to you. There's loads of other stuff going on, but I choose to look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. And it says this in this lovely song verse, to see things like you do. Why why do we sing that and pray that? Because where there is no vision, the people perish. So do not, please do not treat prophecies with contempt. God, I look to you. God, I look to you. Give me, give us vision to see things like you do. Do we stand together? God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. To see things like you do, oh God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me wisdom, cause you know just what to do. what to do and I will love you Lord my strength and I will love you Lord my shield and I will love you Lord my rock forever all my days
So my brothers and sisters in Christ, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not extinguish the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. Never damp the fire of the Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Come and speak to me My heart responds